Hi, this is Greg Benz with another quick Photoshop tutorial. In this video, I want to demonstrate how you can use Photoshop to quickly and easily get nice straight vertical lines. You can see in this image that both the vertical lines of the bridge as well as the buildings in the background are sort of slanted from the out in. And that's very common when shooting architectural shots where you have something that's obviously a straight edge and you get what's called the keystoning effect or this sort of converging verticals which is the result of having your lens pointed anything other than perfectly level. If it's angled up at your subject, you're gonna get this unless you happen to be working with the tilt shift lens, which many people don't have. But no problem, it's very easy to fix this in Photoshop and I will show you two different ways you can do it. Uh, the first, I'll show you how you can use my Lumenzia Basics panel if you happen to be a Lumenzia user. And the second, I'll show you how you can just use it in Photoshop without having to use the Basics panel. So first, the thing we need to do is select all the different layers here. If we simply transform one of the layers, then they won't be aligned and things aren't gonna look quite right. So you wanna make sure you have them all selected and then you have three options. You can go ahead and transform them all at once, but I don't like this approach for a couple of reasons. One, it's destructive to all of the layers. And two, uh, you can get a little bit of a misalignment between layers when you do this. There's a risk that you create sort of a, a pixel artifact uh, as you do this. So it's not my preferred approach. It is an option. Uh, the second option is to simply right click and choose to merge the layers. And you can certainly do that. Uh, the result will look great. There won't be any artifacts when you transform it. However, uh, it is a destructive change. You've lost all your layers. And when you transform this, the transformation itself is also destructive. The advantage of this approach is that the file size is much smaller, so it's definitely an option. But I'm going to undo that and show you my preferred way, which is to work with smart objects. If you're using my Lumenzia Basics panel, you can just simply click on Smart Object. Otherwise, you can right click in the menu and choose to convert to Smart Object. Now, when you do this, be aware that when you right click on layers, whether you click on a thumbnail or on the text or on the blank space on the right, you'll get different menus. So just make sure you right click on this blank space to the right. So now that we've converted to a smart object, I can go ahead and click the verticals button in the Lumenzia Basics panel. And when I do this, it's gonna pop up an interface with a couple of different options in terms of how we wanna transform the image. We can work on both sides of the image, which will typically be the option you would want. Uh, or you can work on just one side of the image, and I'll show them both. But I'm gonna start by doing both sides, and this would be the same as using the Perspective Transform tool. And all I have to do is just simply grab one of these top corners, just click and drag out until things look essentially vertical. And I can test exactly where I am by clicking and dragging from the left ruler, and I get this guide, and I can bring it wherever I want, and then when I let go, it's gonna drop in place. So I can already see that things are pretty much vertical on the bridge here. They look really good. I'm going to go back and I'm going to grab another ruler and just kind of check where I am with the building here. And that's pretty close, but it looks like it's still leaning a bit. And as I look at the edge of this building, actually things look pretty good. I don't know that I want to make any further changes, but I'm just going to grab one more and just want to see exactly where I am. So actually, I think I pretty much got it perfect just by the eyeball there. So at this point, I can either hit the enter button or click on this check mark and I'm done. Lumenzi will automatically get rid of all these guides for you and we're done. So here's the finished image and here was the before. So you can see before and after and it's dramatically improved the buildings and given us nice straight lines throughout the image. Now I did mention there's another way that you can work in Lumenzi. So I'm gonna go back and show you the alternative approach. So I'm gonna click on verticals again and this time I'm gonna choose the one-sided option. And when I click this, I'll see the same option. However, when I click and drag, you're gonna see that it's pulling from just one side of the image, not from both. So this bridge is remaining essentially the way it was, which I might prefer in this case because I kinda of like how the leading lines are coming in uh, and it accentuates this diagonal. Um, although to be honest, I probably wouldn't use this approach on this particular image. but it is still uh, an interesting case study in terms of how this is used. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish it. So you can see I did not get that exactly right when I started. So I'm just gonna go ahead and play with it a little bit more. And I can see that you know, when you work with this tool, you, you do have some different trade-offs, but you get the general idea that you can continue to drag out these different rulers. And there's really no reason you have to make adjustments uh, just in this perspective. You can also grab 
rulers from the other side as well. So if I was looking kind of sideways down a hallway, I might ch choose to make changes in the other dimensions. If I just click and drag out in the other directions, I can really kind of change this any way that I want. So I'm gonna say, okay, we sort of finish this. And just to show this one-sided transformation, we have our finished image here, which, you know, the buildings look much, much straighter, look really nice versus the original image. And again, I like the two-sided transformation on this image. I think it's much more appropriate, but I just wanted to show you that. So I wanna go back now and show you, if you aren't using the Lumencia Basics panel, how do you make those same changes? And the answer is still pretty simple, but you need to do a couple of things. First, we need to make sure our rulers are visible before we start, because that's where guides come from. So we can simply go up to view and rulers. Now you notice my menus may look different than the ones you're using. That's because I have custom menus that I've created in Photoshop. And if you sign up for my newsletter, I'll send you a free copy of the custom menus that I have here, which just are a nice way of uh, simplifying the menus down to the options uh, photographers would commonly use. But anyway, you're gonna have the same menu options, whatever version you have. So go to view rulers, click on that. You can see the rulers have popped up. Doesn't matter what measurement they're in, it's all good to go. And now we can go up to edit, transform, and there's distort and perspective. Distort is the same as that one-sided transformation that I showed you. Perspective is the two-sided transformation. So I'm gonna click on that to get into this perspective window. And now I can work exactly the way that we were just a minute ago. I can go ahead and drag this out, see how I'm doing here, kind of check things. And I didn't get it quite as good this time, so let's go ahead and fix that. So I like those verticals, I'm gonna say okay. And just gonna be one last step here when you're working manually, the guide does not go away. You can either take it and sort of click and drag right off the screen if you have the move tool, Otherwise, um, you know, you may have multiple here and you probably don't wanna be dragging them all off. So simply go up to view, clear guides. And when you click that, that's gonna get rid of those. So um, basically the same uh, workflow, just a little bit quicker with the basics panel. Uh, either way is a great approach. But again, uh, you want to be working with a smart object typically. I think that's the best way because it is non-destructive. And let's go back just to show you, I can go and transform this again. And when I do this, I just want to show you that it is truly non-destructive. I can go all the way back to the original. All that pixel data has been saved. So I definitely recommend working with a smart object. Uh, it's going to retain all the layers inside here. I can click into it to keep editing the original. And I can always fix this if I didn't get it perfectly right the first time. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please sign up uh, for more by subscribing to my YouTube channel as well as my newsletter. Thanks.